Oh, how fast! Hello, I'm Karim, and I study at Lodz University of Technology. I will show you around my university today. Uh, the TUL campus is very close to the city center, so I will take a walk there. Follow me. You can see in the reflection the EC1 Science and Technology Center, which uh, won the National Geographic competition of the seven new wonders of Fallen. The old power station has gained a new different character, uh, just like other revitalized buildings in the late 19th century, uh, when Wuj was the hub of textile industry and the city of factory owners. The office blocks behind me are the gates of the city of Wuj, and this is not the end. Work is underway on a modern recreational space. On my left is a beautiful historical Orthodox Church of St. Alexander Nevsky. Its presence in the city center shouldn't come as a surprise. Historically, Wuj was a city of four different cultures, Polish, German, Russian, and Jewish. Impressive, isn't it? We are now on one of the longest streets in Europe, full of bars, beautiful historic element houses, always bustling with life. Festivals and concerts take place here in the summer as well. In Wuj, you can join the ranks of true masters. Here is the virtuoso Arthur Rubinstein and me, his faithful disciple. Oh! Madame President is sitting on the bench of Julian Tuvim, a famous Polish poet who was born in Wuj. Let me welcome our future students to beautiful city of Wuj. One of the most famous graduates of Lodz University of Technology. Wuj is a city with an extremely rich film industry. Right now you can see the mural which is dedicated to the Kshiminski brother who in 1899 opened the first cinema in Poland called the Cabinet of Illusions. Believe me, in the evening, this place of Piotrkowska becomes the social center of food. This is the place where people come to meet friends, eat and drink. We are at the main interchange stop, where uh, the residents of Wuj call the Unicorn Stable. You can buy a ticket at this ticket machine, and since Wuj is a multicultural academic city, you have the instructions in several languages. And here we are, already at Tool Campus. You can see one of many historic buildings that belong to Lodz University of Technology. We have villas, palaces, historic post-industrial buildings, and also a beautiful four-hectare park, which is part of our campus. Good morning, Karim. Where are you supposed to be on film set? Hello, sir. Right, I've got to run. Don't worry, we'll show you the campus again. Right now, I've got to go to the studio. Oh, here you are at last. Now we can start. Silence on the set. Three, two, one, action. Good morning. We are happy to welcome you to the virtual open day at Lodz University of Technology. You will be taken on a guided tour around one of the largest technical universities in Poland by Hania Penkala and Karim Otrok. For the second time in the history of Lodz University of Technology, we are taking up the challenge to host you virtually on our campus during an open day in English. Last year, we met online in the premises of the International Cooperation Center. We continue this tradition, and this year we are also meeting at the ICC, the place where foreign candidates apply to study. Do you like science and are wondering how to make the most of your talents to find a good job? Have you been learning foreign languages for a long time and would like to use them to work abroad? Or perhaps you want to manage a company, supplies, or a team? If your answer to at least one of these questions is yes, then you are at the right place. Lodz University of Technology offers 25 fields of study run in foreign languages, which will allow you to explore the secrets of science and gain education that is sought after on the job market. We would like to start by asking Professor Andrzej Romanowski, the Vice Rector for Education, to say a few words. Dear international candidates, welcome to the second edition of TUL 
Open Virtual Day. Uh, Łódź is a vibrant city located in the very heart of Europe and Łódź University of Technology is one of the best Polish universities. Uh, we offer a wide variety of study programs conducted in three languages and using student-centered educational model. I hope you will stay with us for the entire day to get uh, some inspiration and I hope to see you in Łódź soon. Thank you, sir. Today, we've prepared a truly amazing day full of surprises. In addition to the main presentation of our offer, a special candidate package is waiting for you. The link to this package can be found under this live broadcast. Also, we've prepared webinar meetings with ambassadors of the fields of study. So let's get to the point and start presenting our offer. Hania, could you imagine life in today's world without a smartphone and your favorite application? I personally can't. What's more, in the coming future, more of our daily tasks will be supported by the work of programmers. I agree with you 100%. And that is why the first group of fields of study that we will talk about today are information technology programs. We must admit that IT programs are so far the most popular with our candidates. So let's move on to the most popular field of study offered by Lodz University of Technology, computer science at the bachelor's level. Professor Lydia Jaskowska Sturmiwo, please tell us why this field is so popular and what career prospects does it offer? You both are right. Computer, internet and smart devices are all around us and are smarter and smarter. However, the new generations require new functionalities that need to be developed and programmed. Our computer science studies are focused on teaching in C, on teaching programming in C, C++, Java, and Python. You will learn not only about operating systems, databases, computer network, and software design, but also about internet programming, human-computer interaction, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and many, many more. At International Faculty of Engineering, we use modern teaching methods for developing students' activity, creativity, and communication skills. Our graduates are highly demanded by IT companies and find employment around the world. They are also very well prepared to lead their own companies and continue studies at the master level. Uh, computer science is not the only field of study addressed to programming enthusiasts. Uh, after all, as we know, programming has, one, has more than one name. Uh, we can develop complex databases, but also design games. Here with us is a supervisor of another bachelor's degree program, that is Information Technology, represented by the Dean of the Faculty of Technical Physics, Information Technology and Applied Mathematics, Professor Adam Wojciechowski. Please explain to us, what is the difference between computer science and information technology? And who is the second field dedicated to? Oh, hi, good morning. First of all, I must say that information technology means really much more than just programming. So different information technologies are really omnipresent in different every field of life and many branches of industry. So the question is, how do we teach information technologies? First of all, we try to follow trends and prepare students to keep up with rapidly changing technologies as to let them easily adjust to the most profitable and expected skills of course, inspired by our international industrial environment. Uh, as we believe in social and business responsibility of science and education, we concentrate on practical knowledge, usable skills, and cutting edge forms of education. Uh, as a consequence, our alumni become not only IT specialists or programmers, they become a team leaders. So considering the differences of our uniqueness, how we can describe the inter intervention technology field of study. So it can be expressed with three main phrases. These are machine learning, artificial intelligence, data science, and software engineering. So in this way, we create the best paid and the most wanted IT competencies in the education market. So 
this was the short description of information technology. But if you would like more, please feel welcome to discover information technologies with us. Of course, IFE faculty with the support of the team's faculty staff. Thank you very much. Thank you. Graduates of both fields of study can continue their studies at the master's program of computer science and information technology. What are the studies like and where do master's degree holders in this field most, in, most often find jobs? We are greeting the Dean of the Faculty of Electrical, Electronic, Computer and Control Engineering, Professor Jacek Kucharski, who will, uh, who will help us to answer the questions above. Hello and thank you for, for having me. And uh, as we can hardly imagine our today's life without IT and teams of programmers, uh, it's become more and more obvious or even impossible when referring to artificial intelligence and data science the two rapidly growing areas of modern digital world. This is, this is exactly what we propose during the second cycle, cycle studies on computer science and information technologies, which is, which is the response of uh, our two faculties to the inquiries and demand, in demands coming from IT industry broadly represented in ICT cluster, Central Poland cluster. Uh, the ICT the uh, ICIT study program comprises two paths. Uh, the first one is artificial intelligence, uh, embracing not only the hot topics in the field like machine learning or deep learning methods, but also, to name a few, uh, knowledge presentation and processing, heuristic searching, which are the natural components of intelligent systems. Uh, the second path uh, concerns data science and, among others, deals with sensory data processing, uh, databases and data warehousing, and of course, a survey of uh, advanced algorithms. Uh, it's worth man uh, one mentioning that uh, the uh, CSIT has been designed as a very modern uh, fashion program where traditional forms like lectures or tutorials have been partially replaced by the variety of project activities, including research and industrial ones. Uh, by and large, uh, CSIT is a very up-to-date study program and master degree holders in this field can find numerous job offers for professionals in both of our fields, not only locally, but also worldwide. And we know that our alumni have been easily employed both by local and international companies. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the dynamically changing reality means that a person must more and more often communicate with the so-called artificial intelligence. Uh, humanoid robots are starting to become part of our everyday life. That is why Lodz University of Technology has launched a completely new field of study uh, at the master's level, human-computer interaction. From the moment it was launched, this field of study has sparked a huge interest. The HCI supervisor is with us, Dr. Magdalena Wrubel-Lachowska. Uh, how can you explain this interest? And are these studies more about creating robots or rather about programming them? Hi, hello, Hania. Hello, everyone. Good question. I would say both of them and none of them is the time. Human-computer interaction is something more than just another technical studies, as the main scope is a particular kind of interaction that is a situation when people and technology communicate and react to each other. The purpose of HCI is to design this interaction and make computer systems more human-friendly so that they meet users' needs. To get to know how to design technologies that are indeed human-centered, students need to reach beyond the hard skills and technical knowledge about programming, prototyping, data analysis, etc., and also learn a lot of social and humanistic knowledge about users, their needs and disabilities as individuals, as well as the members of a society. To sum it up, uh, human-computer interaction studies are dedicated to all students who want to design and investigate te in innovative technologies that are oriented on the needs of diversified users. 
Thank you very much. We should add that extremely important components of programming, which is the basis of all these fields, are process modeling, data analysis, and simulation. Without these components, there is no proper and efficient programming. That is why we have launched the modeling and data science field of study, which is represented today by its supervisor, Dr. Eva Pastorczak. What can graduates of this field of study expect after graduation and what prospects does the job market offer them? So, um, as uh, my colleagues already mentioned, uh, our technological abilities uh, expand very fast. Uh, and those abilities um, include um, gathering, um, storing, uh, analyzing and exploiting a vast amount of uh, data. Uh, so, with this uh, development, um, a lot of uh, jobs uh, appeared on the market, um, like data analyst, uh, like a data modeler, but also in hard sciences, there are uh, science jobs which require the knowledge of the science field, but also the abilities to uh, explore the data. Uh, so, uh, the uh, employers uh, are trying to deal with this um, shortage on the market by employing, uh, of course, computer scientists because they know how to program, they know how to store the data, um, but also mathematicians uh, with their vast um, mathematical skills, uh, which help analyze the data, uh, physicists who uh, are problem solvers, and they know uh, the kind of first principles which uh, help them build uh, specific models for the data. Uh, and uh, so there is a kind of a gap on the market uh, for uh, graduates with all those skills. And this is what we give uh, our graduates uh, in uh, our study field of uh, modeling and data science. Uh, thank you for this answer and thank you very much to all our supervisors. It is said that IT does not exist without electronics. I mean, where would programmers test their work if there was no electrical energy or electronics, right? In fact, today's reality is a world of new and advanced technologies, which not only support us in everyday life, and put us in the position of citizens of the world where communication barriers in the context of distances do not exist, but also help us to use natural resources in a sustainable way. We will now move on to the world of electronics of any scale, in which our students design renewable sources or fiber optic networks. We have a representative of the fields of study where students explore the secrets of future technologies. Dr. Krzysztof Tomalczyk. Electronic and telecommunication engineering focuses on advanced competences in electronics. Students gain knowledge on modulation and coding, modern uh, physics, or microprocessor technology, to name just a few. What should candidates interested in this field expect and what characteristics should an ideal candidate have? Yes, of course we live in a world uh, which goes more and more virtual in the last decades, so but it's still there is a real world, a real physical world, and the ideal candidate for electronic telecommunications engineering should not only be keen on information technologies and sciences, but should only also feel this physical world with its physical analog systems which support the link, yes, between our physical world, our nature, and this virtual world we create in the background. So what to expect when you come to study electronics? You should expect to be, to be learned about systems. Yes, equipment and systems, which process signals and energy to support the existence of both of these worlds. And this is what you're going to learn here. And what is the vision for the future of the graduates of electronic and telecommunication engineering? Uh, how high is the demand on the labor market for specialists in this field? At the moment, we see that uh, most of the jobs uh, 
or engineers are in information technologies, yes, but most of the modern uh, advancing technologies like Internet of Things, uh, like Industry 4.0, uh, modern smart cities, smart buildings, uh, electric mobility, uh, emission free, of course, and so on, so on. These are the fields which are going to rise, yes, uh, in the nearest future. And it's not enough to be a um, computer scientist. You should feel systems because systems process signals which are necessary to keep such new technologies alive, signals and energy. And that's, and I'm sure that uh, these jobs are, are still going to, to rise here. There is no denying that training highly specialized graduates is a priority of our university. However, it should be also stressed that internationalization plays a special role for Lodz University of Technology. We help our students to gain experience from various perspectives, including abroad. That's possible thanks to a long list of, of tools partner universities. One of those is University of Naples, with which tool offers a joint studies as part of the Applied Electronics program. Please tell us a bit more about it. Yes, we have this master program with uh, uh, Federica II University at Naples, one of the oldest universities in Italy. We have four semester program in which uh, our students study here in the uh, for the first semester, then to next semester they merge with Italian students and study together here or there. And the last fourth semester they go uh, to Italy to have a diploma there, yes, and Italian students have diploma here, so it's possible to gain two diplomas at the same time, which is uh, beneficial, of course, because you are more qualified, you have more competences, more documents to, to fill and to, to get your future career here or there or anywhere in Europe. So by taking up studies at Lodz University of Technology in the field of applied electronics, the students not only have the opportunity to study in two countries, but also get a double degree, which means that students will have two diplomas in their hands upon graduation. Uh, in practice, what are other benefits? Uh, the key point of all, uh, I would say, uh, double degree uh, studies is that it's not only just like Erasmus, you go there for one single semester and you merge with the culture there. It's always because you are obliged, yes, to, to work together with those students for the entire study period. You really get involved in international teamwork. Yes, you get acquainted with this another culture, very similar, but still not our culture. And then you get into, because we have many projects there, you always have a chance to work together and to uh, develop your team skills. Yes, it's very important. Intercultural team skills for your future job and career. That's it. Definitely. Uh, thank you very much. As you can see, uh, each field of study at our university is well designed and has something interesting to offer. Now we will present the fields of study that are related to mechanical sciences, although not only, which we will explain in a moment. Uh, Karim, I know that this group has a special meaning for you. Exactly, because a year ago I graduated from my engineering studies and in the field of mechanical engineering, about which, but not only, we will talk about in a moment with the supervisors of these fields, Dr. Michał Lipian and Professor Damian Obydowski. The first question is for Dr. Michał Lipian. Uh, very often, candidates may wrongly assume that the field of study called mechanical engineering involves only car construction. To what extent is this true? Well, obviously that can be true. Um, I'm calling you right now from the Institute of Turbo Machinery, where we have several student associations. Some of them are constructing cars, solar cars, or those who are running on minimum fuel. Um, and there are plenty of uh, mechanical engineering students in there who are doing different stuff, uh, not only uh, like design of machines or strength of materials, 
I personally, I'm uh, I'm a tutor of um, the Power Engineering Student Association. Um, the students are dealing with small wind turbines, and also we are having quite a lot of um, mechanical engineering students. Uh, once again, they are dealing with aerodynamics, with power engineering, even with business technology management, stuff like this. Um, and by the way, they are also very keen to get a little bit dirty with their hands, um, with hand-on experience with some tools. So what I can say, um, Mechanical engineering can be car, but can be car construction, but it can be so much more. Thank you, sir. This is exactly how I remember my studies. I must admit that at the end of my engineering studies, I had a great dilemma whether or not to continue studying mechanical engineering at the master's level, given that tool offers such an opportunity by studying advanced mechanical engineering. I would like to ask Professor Obidovsky to tell us what are the advantages of pursuing master's studies in advanced mechanical engineering. Well, thank you, Karim, for the question. Uh, the truth is we are changing the advanced mechanical engineering into the course which is called Master in Mechanical Engineering. So by the name, we want to say this is the second level of the study. And uh, the studies will change also in the way that uh, we'll have a problem-based learning on, on, let's say, most of the subjects. Uh, we'll use also uh, tools for optimization. So what you've learned on the first level will be then developed in a more detailed way in the, in the second level. Uh, we believe that the students, the absolvents of our course, will, will be able to work in the research and development centers. So, the, the, let's say, all the fields are open. You don't need to be a, a mechanic in a, in a way that you're working with the cars. You can do anything you want. Uh, the studies are much more involving the individual interests of the students. So, you may ask your supervisor for uh, making a project that uh, you are very keen in. So I, I welcome you warmly. Do not hesitate. Just just join us. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much. One more thing. Graduates of both programs may continue their studies at the doctoral degree program at the Interdisciplinary Doctoral School of Tool. And with the IDS representative, we will be talking later today. Now, imagine that you are expanding your knowledge in two areas of science at the same time. Does it sound interesting? Well, at our university, you have such a possibility by choosing biomedical engineering and technologies at your bachelor's level. Dr. Alexandra Krulak is with us today. Uh, Madam, please tell us how much of medicine and how much of technical science is there in this particular program? Oh, in the program of biomedical engineering and technologies, uh, we have several courses. Uh, that are at least partly taught by um, specialists with medical background, for example, anatomy and physiology or introduction to medical sciences. Uh, however, uh, each such course has also technical elements. And on the other hand, uh, all the technical um, courses have elements of uh, medicine included, uh, since you cannot design um, a medical system without the knowledge about the human body, about different diseases um, and uh, diagnostic and treatment methods. Um, Modern medicine is filled with technology. Uh, medical devices include computer systems, uh, electronics, robotics. Uh, we use special materials for prosthesis, for implants, or for uh, wand dressings. Um, so it is necessary to know uh, methods um, of um, development of uh, various technical elements. And therefore, biomedical in engineering and technologies program is a mixture of computer science, uh, information technology, electronics, material science, textronics, and also data science. That sounds very promising. Thank you for the presentation. And one more important thing, all the fields of study from this group are run at the International Faculty of Engineering, a prestigious tool unit which provides education in foreign languages. This means that apart from all the advantages we've just stated, we have one more. Uh, which is a strong emphasis on internationalization. One way to internationalize studies is through a compulsory mobility semester where all IFE students go abroad to one of over 200 universities from all over the world. I work uh, in the student mobility division at the International Cooperation Center and I will be happy to help you with your mobility. We move on to the next fourth group of our fields of study. You want to be an engineer, but you are also an artistic soul and you can't decide what to choose. With us, you don't have to limit your creativity. You can develop at the same time in the fields of art and advanced technologies and boost your artistic talents. 
Do you want to be a fashion designer or a manager in the fashion industry? Are you interested in using fabrics in medicine, transport or construction? Or perhaps you dream about designing visual identity or want to deal with commercial graphics? These are just a few of the paths that you can follow when you decide to study design and textile. We will tell you a little bit more about these opportunities together with Professor Katarzyna Zimna from the design side and Professor Zbigniew Draczyński, textile engineering and textile engineering and fashion industry. Let me start with such a question. Are the English language programs within this group related in some way? Our, co our candidates often ask about it and look for support in choosing the key they should apply when they aren't sure which field of study to choose. Um, MA in design, I would say, is the most uh, artistic study program. Our course uh, consists of about 70% of art and design related classes and 30% of engineering ones. Uh, art classes include drawing, photography, even experimental printmaking, uh, so our students can uh, expand their visual language while working on specialization projects in the fields of textile design, fashion design and visual communication. At the same time, uh, they gain knowledge related to materials and processes used in the industry. Um, so they become aware of the material properties uh, of the products, uh, but also of broader cultural, social and economic and ecological uh, context of design. Uh, so this is a very interdisciplinary course. Yes, in case of engineering study, uh, they choose how uh, they choose how to prepare proper textiles. For example, starting from the fibers, uh, producing uh, yarns, and then a proper uh, proper yarns uh, designed for the knitting materials, and, uh, designed for uh, weaving materials, and uh, also not only uh, mechanical uh, aspects of the textile industry, but also chemical aspects. So uh, they can choose uh, some uh, pathway uh, how to prepare uh, proper chemical uh, manufacturing uh, of the uh, textiles. But also uh, a third pathway of our faculty is uh, how to design, how to make clothing. Uh, so three legs of our um, faculty and they cover all uh, area of textile industry. Uh, we know that studies in these fields do not focus only on strictly specialized knowledge, but also put emphasis on interdisciplinary development, including various topics from business areas. Uh, what competencies do students gain when they study the fields related to textile engineering? Uh, so, uh, when they study textiles, they have to know uh, what is the background of the textile industry. They have to find uh, proper uh, tools uh, to make uh, textiles um, competitive to other uh, companies, uh, from, for example, from abroad. Uh, so, they study how to use textiles, uh, for example, in medicine, how to make textiles in automotive uh, industry, and uh, how to sell uh, the products is the most important in the textile industry now. And with what skills do graduates of design enter the labor market? Um, the most important uh, for us is to provide our students a smooth transition from the university uh, to the job market. Uh, so they are equipped in many different skills and competences that help them to adjust to different roles and contacts within the areas of culture, education, marketing and production. Uh, but we are at the University of Technology. Uh, so, of course, they become creative and independent designers. Uh, but thanks to this unique location and technological background, uh, they also know very well how the market works. Uh, they know materials and technologies, so they can communicate uh, with and understand needs of different stakeholders, users, producers, managers, uh, buyers, and so on. Um, they also, um, they're good team players uh, and 
they solve uh, many different interdisciplinary uh, design problems during the study course. And they can communicate um, with the peers uh, from uh, textile engineering, of course. Yes, it is very important that uh, students at our faculty, they can talk to each other, not only engineers uh, between engineers, but also uh, with the designers. They can understand uh, what designer has in his mind and uh, he can choose proper way uh, to, uh, to meet the uh, middle of the way. And what is the gaining experience on the labor market? Uh, do you support students in their search for internships or, and work placements? Are there any units or institutions that you cooperate with? Yes, uh, we support students uh, to, to find a job, to find an internship in our uh, textile industry. Uh, so uh, we've got some collaboration with many factories. Uh, so. Uh, it is normal that we can support uh, them to find uh, these places. Uh, so uh, we are proud that uh, our students uh, can find jobs in such uh, companies. And uh, after um, this situation, uh, we've got uh, many possibilities to collaborate uh, more with uh, the companies. But, uh, our, uh, University, uh, our faculty is not only a theoretical uh, faculty, but also some practical aspects. Uh, we can choose uh, the newest uh, technologies uh, and we know uh, what the factories need uh, from our students. And Professor Zinov? Um, our uh, MA in design course is a practice-based study program, uh, which means that during one and a half year, uh, each semester, uh, students have four weeks of internships. Uh, this is called design training module when they work for the company. Uh, they can find the company that is the most suitable for their uh, professional interests uh, or that might become a potential future employer. Um, then, of course, we uh, help with all formal issues and uh, they can also choose from the list of about 200 uh, companies and institutions uh, that our faculty regularly uh, collaborates with, uh, including various uh, graphic, fashion, textile, furniture, ceramic, uh, design and production companies, uh, publishing houses, theatres, uh, museums, fashion brands like Monari, uh, Top Secret or LPP, uh, marketing and retail units, uh, including IKEA, uh, and so on. So there is uh, something for everyone. Uh, many, many really exciting opportunities to expand one's portfolio and gain uh, experience. And do you follow the professional paths of your graduates? What successes of your students are you especially proud of? Yes, we are really proud of our students because usually they are members of the management team. And we can um, say that our uh, graduate student is the main director of uh, dyeing factory in Łódź in Konstantinov, and is the biggest uh, dyeing factory uh, in the Europe. And also, we've got uh, students are working as uh, directors uh, in other fields of the uh, textile, not only dyeing factories, but also uh, waving uh, um, factories. Uh, for example, Optex uh, New Wood, uh, as well and inside uh, the cities we've got uh, factories. And they are working not only for Polish market, uh, they are working for Italian market. For example, uh, factory uh, Tolenio, um, uh, Italian uh, factory. All our students uh, are members of the staff, uh, management staff in these factories. Uh, our graduates are mostly women, uh, so we are always proud uh, and excited when uh, they take things in their own hands and start uh, their own design brands, uh, open uh, their own studios in the areas of graphic design, photography, illustration, textile, uh, fashion design, uh, or even artistic weaving, like our uh, award-winning alumni from the Tartaruga studio. Uh, we try to keep in touch and promote uh, the works. Um, well, also, uh, many of our graduates uh, work for big uh, 
companies as uh, freelancers or in-house designers. Um, these are often international uh, companies that get to know our students during their uh, Erasmus Plus internships abroad. Um, and well, design is a great career path uh, because you can work from any place uh, in the world and for many places in the world. Uh, so these times I think it's a real asset. Thank you. Thank you to our supervisors. Thank you for your time and sharing your knowledge and your passion with our candidates. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. No technical university could exist without fields of study related to architecture and construction. So it is not surprising that Lodz University of Technology offers programs in English in the field of architecture. In case of our university, we offer both the bachelor's and master's degree studies. Let me welcome the supervisor, Dr. Tomasz Grzelakowski, and let's start with the undergraduate program. Uh, we know that a graduate, an architect engineer, has a wide range of opportunities when it comes to employment after graduation. And now, even more so, as from the last academic year, as part of elective modules, students can attend interior design classes. Please tell us a little bit more about it. Thank you. Um, nice to see you and thank you for inviting me here. And you are quite right. Um, the choice of elective uh, modules allows our graduates to prepare for various jobs in the construction uh, industry, but not only in the construction industry. So mainly, of course, uh, architectural design. So jobs like um, designer um, assistants at the architectural office or interior design office and uh, designers at the um, interior design office and with some severe uh, limitation to the size of the building, even in architecture uh, as such. Um, a part of that, of course, uh, contractors, companies, so um, open position at um, construction sites, uh, research and development departments of various companies, and uh, public administration which supervise uh, the design and the building process um, uh, are open for our graduates. And um, those modules prepare them also quite well for um, creative um, industry, so um, advertisement, web designing, photography, uh, you can find our graduate in such places as that. I must say that the graduate of architecture at the bachelor's level can choose from a wide uh, range of job offers. We know, however, that the admission rules for this field of study are quite unique, as the candidate must pass the so-called art skills test. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah, uh, that's a prehand drawing exam. In fact, we ask participants to draw two scenes uh, of uh, selected um, objects, uh, buildings in their environment, and so on, to test the uh, sensitivity and um, understanding of 3D space. Um, uh, the drawing, as you can clearly see, um, are a fairly important tool in architectural life. Uh, they allow you to communicate with others and even understand your own um, ideas um, as such. Uh, and uh, we like to know the level of those skills uh, in our hopefully future to be students. Uh, so a very important information for our future architecture candidates, the art skill uh, art skills test that we have just talked about applies only to bachelor's degree studies. Uh, please tell us what, apart from submitting the standard documents, must a candidate for architecture at the master's level do or present? Uh, does the candidate have to be an engineering graduate? Uh, yes, and um, it should be an, an engineer and, a, and architect as well. So you have to finish the first cycle of architecture to uh, apply for the second uh, cycle for bachelor level. So after submitting all the documents and presenting the portfolio, our candidates begin a year and a half journey at a postgraduate degree at the field of architecture. Please tell me why it is not worth ending studies with the title of architect engineer, but uh, continue education at master's level. Well, first, of, first and for, foremost, um, the reason is that uh, only completing a second cycle, so obtaining a master's degree, will allow you to apply for a license uh, that will um, give you the right to design whenever you like in the field of architecture. Thank you very much, and uh, we encourage you to study architecture at Lodz University of Technology. But that's not all. 
Uh, Karim, do you know what is the third field of study in our university's offer that is related not only to architecture and construction, but also to environmental engineering? I may surprise you, but I do know. This is the master's field of, the, of study that is energy systems in the built environment. It is one of the newest programs offered by Lodz University of Technology. And I must admit that its name is quite enigmatic. Uh, we welcome the supervisor, Professor Darius Haim. You say that this field prepares students for one of the professions that will save our planet in the future. Please tell us something more and explain what the students uh, learn and what career opportunities do they have after graduating? <clears throat> yes, thank you very much. Uh, yes, it, that's true. Uh, we have to consider that uh, the single building uh, or the whole city or the built environment uh, at all is, are responsible for more than 50% of global energy consumption. So, of course, uh, this energy consumption leads, leads also to the CO2 emission and leads to adverse impact of our life. In our life. So what, what students can learn at our field of study is how to use advanced computational methods to optimize future building uh, as, and the city as well and improve existing one. So uh, moreover, students will get to know different techniques like uh, life cycle analysis, environmental assessment in methods, uh, for example, BRIAM or LEED, which is mainly, which can be mainly applied near architecture or construction design. Uh, and of course, uh, this is another another step, how to optimize architecture, how to optimize building regarding energy, regarding environmental impact. So uh, there are now uh, a lot of consulting companies and national, national or international, uh, which are looking for an expert gradu graduated in that uh, field of study. That's why uh, energy system in the built environment is an, a perfect second, second cycle study for uh, architects, civil engineers, electric, electrical engineers, uh, mechanical engineers, uh, and of course, uh, not only for them. So uh, all these uh, students which finish the first uh, cycle of study can uh, get the additional skills uh, studying uh, energy system in the built environment. As far as I know, uh, students of energy systems in the built environment have mostly practical classes. They work on specialized computer programs and cooperate with the industry. Uh, what are the other unique characteristics of, studying, of studying ESBE? Mm, yes, for lectures, we used to invite uh, visiting professors. Uh, why? For more practical uh, activities, for more practical classes, we close cooperate with industry. So students are solving individual problems uh, with experts from both uh, university and industry. So for some specific projects, like the project from the, from the second semester, uh, even uh, more than 10 lecturers and uh, practitioners can be, can be engaged uh, as, a, as, a, as an expert and consulting expert. So generally, the whole program is divided uh, into three semesters. So first semester is the general theoretical background. Uh, so we call it like a tog and chalk. The second semesters, we have only two big, uh, two big but very flexi flexible projects regarding uh, one project regards the uh, city and the second project regards building. And of course, the last semester is dedicated for the master diploma study. And of course, we are open to develop the diploma activity in cooperation with industry. And also we cooperate with many university, European universities. So just now there are three of our students doing very practical, practical industrial study at University of Aveiro. Thank you very much. You know, Hania, I think since we've talked about the environment, we are approaching the biochemical sciences. Exactly. Uh, programs such as energy systems in the built environment or architecture provide knowledge in the field of designing spaces, buildings and cities of the future with a sustainable energy balance and neutral impact on the environment. And the environment is made up of living organisms, cells, tissues, enzymes. So if there are candidates with us today who want to explore topics such as biotechnology, nanotechnology, processes in the food, chemical or pharmaceutical industries, now you should turn up the volume. Exactly. We start with the field of study that are offered at both levels of education, that is industrial biotechnology. 
Here with us is Dr. Mauku Jata Ringaiwo, the supervisor of the bachelor's program. Please tell me why industrial? How is the field of study different from the standard biotechnology? What makes it different from other similar fields of study offered by other universities? Uh, okay, uh, hello. So, uh, industrial biotechnology is a specialized uh, subfield of biotechnology whose objective is to develop approaches that will yield green industrial processes that are cost effective and sustainable. So, it is an industrial paradigm uh, which is uh, based on the exploitation of enzymes, uh, microorganisms, and plants uh, to produce energy, uh, industrial chemicals, and consumer goods. And the main distinguishable uh, feature of this uh, program is definitely its interdisciplinarity, since on one hand it teaches topics related to bioscience uh, like molecular biology, uh, biochemistry or bioinformatics. On the other hand, um, it covers um, uh, the methods of the bioengineering that are crucial for maximization of sustainable production steps on an industrial scale. Uh, so, speaking about this uh, interdisciplinarity, uh, as far as we know, the interdisciplinary study program of industrial biotechnology at the bachelor's level allows the students to specify their own interests and make a well-informed decision about further professional development. What does this mean in practice? Okay, so uh, so this uh, translates into giving uh, the student, students the possibility to tailor a curriculum and expand it uh, beyond the interdisciplinary fundamentals. Uh, and this, this can be achieved by selecting from a, a wide array of elective courses and uh, projects uh, which are included in the study program uh, or even other programs offered by uh, Woods University of Technology. Uh, moreover, uh, the study program includes uh, a mobility semester uh, during which the students can explore courses offered by uh, our partner European uh, universities. Uh, finally, in the frame of the study, um, uh, students get a practical experience in a biotech company, which they can select uh, based on their interest uh, or be advised uh, by us to select from a wide array of, uh, of our, our acquainted industrial companies. We already know a lot about industrial biotechnology at the bachelor's level. So now it's time to talk about the master's uh, level. Probably some of our candidates uh, think if uh, I graduated from industrial biotechnology, why continue at master's studies? Perhaps it will be uh, the repetition of what I already know. Let's clarify these doubts during a conversation with the supervisors of the master's degree program, Dr. Ivona Mayak. Please tell me why it is worth spending an extra year and a half pursuing master's studies in industrial biotechnology. Oh, hi. Uh, I think it's definitely worth your time in two cases. First off, uh, when you are planning to pursue a scientific career, that's just the basic level, what you have to have to start off. Uh, and the second one is if you are planning to pursue a career as a highly specialized expert in industry. There is very little overlap with the first cycle. Uh, the first cycle might have given you the right vocabulary, the basic skills, it's like learning new language, while the second cycle uh, will be like applying this language to, for example, writing books. Uh, it has advanced right all over it. There are just three semesters, so there is no time to beat about the bush. No basic or introductory level subjects. We start off with going deep into the molecular mechanism of biological processes and into the state of the art technology. Uh, what is interesting is that in the first semester of the master's degree program of industrial biotechnology, students can choose some of the courses that they want to attend as part of the so-called electives. Uh, students can, for example, attend classes on microorganisms in the production of food and fermented beverages. Does that mean that we can learn how to make beer in this field of study? And what other interesting courses can our candidates attend? Oh, definitely. Uh, with this subject you've mentioned, 
uh, the other called fermented foods and beverages, and I think some of uh, enzyme technology. You will be trained to produce different varieties of beer, but also fermented milk, meat products, vegetables, strong alcohols, both traditional, and you'll be able to design novel foods because you will be very well informed of how microorganisms influence the properties of foods. So you'll be able to come up with really unusual novel applications. Uh, and among the other interesting courses, I would suggest maybe advanced bioinformatics to those who are a bit data savvy, because in industrial biotechnology we deal with big batches of data, uh, and this will give you the information how to deal with those big loads of, uh, of uh, numerical data. Uh, another one is systemic biology, one of my favorites. Mm, because it goes deep into the me um, molecular mechanisms of uh, biological processes and how do we know what we know in systems biology. And my personal absolute favorite, which is nutrigenomics, uh, which tells you about the interaction of food and genes, which may not be obvious at the surface level, and it's very interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have very good news for all graduates of the bachelor's degree studies interested in chemical and biological sciences. The offer of master's studies at Lodz University of Technology also includes nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is defined as a whole set of techniques and methods of creating various structure of nanometric dimensions, that is, at the level of single atoms and molecules. However, such description of nanotechnology program offered at our university would be a complete understatement. The supervisor of nanotechnology is with us, Professor Piotr Ulański. The area of nanotechnology and nanoscience in which students at the second cycle of studies at TUL are educated is very broad and includes uh, fields such as electronics, optics, mechanics, medicine and pharmaceuticals, environmental protection, automotive and aerospace, cosmetics manufacturing, and even household appliances. This is an extremely wide range worthy of a true Renaissance man or woman. Are there equally broad career prospects for the graduates of this field? Definitely yes. First of all, modern medical and pharmaceutical industry needs engineers capable of designing various nanosystems for therapy and diagnostics. For example, modern drug delivery systems are largely based on nanocarriers. Then comes modern electronics, which is mainly based on elements and systems operating on the nanoscale. Modern optical systems, such as organic light emitting diodes used now in displays, TV sets and so on, are based on nanotechnology. Interestingly, some branches of printing industry invest in nanotechnology as well. In polymer industry, there is a growing trend towards nanocomposites. So all this provides truly broad opportunities for graduates in nanotechnology. Moreover, since our nanotechnology studies are conducted at the Faculty of Chemistry, our graduates are also excellent chemists, and this is an additional asset on the job market. Uh, one of the graduates of nanotechnology at our university currently works in an international company as an engineer for production materials. On a daily basis, he deals with the management, supervision and projects, the scope of which includes the selection, testing and implementation of new materials for mass production all around the world. So he does things of uh, great importance. Uh, are you aware of any other examples of such impressive careers after graduating from the faculty? Yes, there are many positive examples of this kind. One of our former students who graduated in nanotechnology within a double diploma program that is led jointly by University, Technical University of Łódź and University of Twente in the Netherlands, uh, works as a research and development uh, technologist at a large international pharmaceutical company. This is a very challenging, but also very rewarding job, uh, mainly focused on designing and uh, testing new drug formulations. Uh, furthermore, a number of our graduates decided to pursue careers in science and they currently work on their PhD projects in Poland and abroad. These are very ambitious and fascinating projects, for example, on new nanocarriers that would be able to deliver radioisotopes selectively to cancer tissues 
and in this way to kill cancer cells. Maybe they'll work well in some future, be saving lives of cancer patients. And it is their expertise in nanotechnology that makes it possible. Thank you very much. We will end the discussion about biochemical programs with an interdisciplinary field of study. For example, one that combines biotechnology with nanotechnology and other fields of science. I am talking about advanced bio-based and bio-inspired materials. We have the program supervisor with us, Professor Ioana Pietraszek. Uh, this uh, program is a relatively young field in the uh, tool offer. Where did the idea to launch it come from? Uh, what needs of the lake bird market does it respond to? Uh, hello. Uh, I can say that the inspiration came from nature uh, that creates many complex uh, materials. So students uh, learn how to design, synthesize and characterize functional materials you can find in nature. And uh, because the quality of life uh, has been improving constantly, we need to identify new materials and create them through chemical, pharmaceutical and uh, advanced technologies industries. Uh, when analyzing the advanced bio-based and bio-inspired materials curriculum, it's impossible not to see that apart from strictly laboratory classes, uh, we also have a lot of soft skills courses where very modern teaching methods are used. Uh, what are these methods and how can soft skills classes be useful to students of such a highly specialized field? Mm -hmm. Actually, there are many project-based uh, subjects which are based on um, problem-based learning and design thinking method. And actually, students based on the real problems identify their own learning objectives. And because this is the teamwork, they improve their communication skills, um, responsibility for learning, for sharing the information. Um, of course, they also learn how to solve the problems uh, within the groups and how to respect others. This is uh, very important, not only in work, but also in our life. Many thanks to all the representatives of uh, biochemical fields. And now we move on in contrast to a completely different area, which is the group of business field of, of studies. The time has come to introduce you to the business programs offered by Lodz University of Technology. Business sciences combine specialist engineering knowledge with soft skills. They teach you how to manage time, team, and above all, how to creatively solve problems in a company. Today with us are Professor Dorota Piotrowska, Dr. Małgorzata Gumola, and Dr. Przemysław Pomykalski, who will tell you more about business fields of studies at TOOL. Let's start with business and technology. And here we notice an increase in the number of applications every year. Dr. Gumola, what makes so many candidates want to study it? I think that the growing interest uh, in business and technology program uh, results mainly from the fact that graduates of this field uh, are really appreciated by employers on the labor market. Uh, business and technology is an interdisciplinary field of study uh, where students can gain knowledge not only of economics, management, uh, marketing or finance, but also of engineering skills and technological aspects of different operations uh, taking place in contemporary companies. Uh, due to this emphasis, uh, which is put on these engineering skills during the studies, uh, it's much easier for graduates to establish some cooperation uh, with designers, technologists or engineers uh, in their professional life. Thank you. Uh, we have an important information for those of you whose first foreign language is French. At our university, we offer studies identical to business and technology, but bilingual in English and French. You study the first semester in English and you complete the rest of your studies in French. The name of the program is Gestion et Technologie. Uh, Professor Piotrowska, what advantages does Gestion et Technologie have apart from a language other than English? 
Yes, this is the program we are very proud of. This is a unique offer among Polish universities. We have a program, as Hania mentioned, run in English and in French. Most of courses uh, are done in, in French, uh, but the first semester to let you prepare better for, for French language is in English. Uh, as Hania mentioned, this is um, the program very close to, to business and technology, uh, and uh, that is true. We developed some competences in the field of of production engineering. We would like to educate some managers, but also engineers able to solve problems, not only technical problems, but also managerial problems um, on the production line. We are very proud that so many French universities from the very beginning participated in the development of this project. We started with uh, five universities, right now French universities, right now we have about 40 uh, universities cooperating with us. Many French students come to, to study within this program, so this is also the unique opportunity to exchange um, well knowledge and some experiences with French students. And also many professors, visiting professors from French universities. So this program focuses mainly on the development of managerial and engineering competences, but also on the development of, of language competences, uh, French language, to let you prepare better for uh, French companies that are present uh, very widely in Poland. So, so this is also a very unique opportunity to, to get to achieve those competences. Let me mention uh, one more thing. This program is also very unique because of uh, the offer of double degrees. We have many uh, double degrees agreements, of course, mainly with um, French universities, but not only. There is also one agreement with um, German uh, university. And you can get within the same time of study uh, studies, you, you can get two diplomas, two degrees. Uh, so this is quite unique, I, I think, and that's a very good deal for you. Uh, and uh, we cooperate also with best universities in French. So this is also a unique opportunity to get very prestigious diploma of a French uh, university. As you can see, double diplomas are a characteristic feature of Laws University of Technology. We are a leader in terms of the variety of offers and the number of signed contracts. We have already found out about engineering programs, uh, business and technology, and its twin, gestion and technology. How do they differ from business studies program, which might have a similar name, but in fact is quite different? Uh, Dr. Przemysław Pomykalski, please tell us. Yes, uh, in short, you study management, not engineering. So, um, well, uh, Theodor Kar von Karman, a Hungarian mathematician, once said, uh, scientists study the world as it is, engineers create the world that has never been. Uh, managers, uh, because in business studies you will study management, managers, uh, they plan undertaking. They gather the resources, um, financial resources, human resources, uh, buildings, uh, machines, uh, whatever necessary, and, and then put them to work, uh, control the outcomes and uh, make necessary adjustments. Uh, just like engineers, managers also create the world that has never been. So it's a fascinating, uh, fascinating area of studies. Uh, just like engineers, we now have new, uh, we have now new challenges. Uh, once, for once, we have to solve uh, to save the planet. Uh, it's um, it's more difficult than we ever imagined, and uh, so far we are failing. So, uh, and we know we can't fail. So we need we need a new group of managers. We need a new breed of managers who will take us uh, through those uh, projects, through those undertakings. Uh, in the world of uh, artificial intelligence and robotics, uh, you need um, 
uh, you need new jobs. Uh, people need new jobs. People need new opportunities. And uh, you as managers will create these uh, jobs. So again, we need a new breed of uh, managers. Uh, there is one more important distinction. Uh, why study management at a technical university? So what makes studying management at a technical university different to, uh, to universities as such? Well, we have many analytical minds. Uh, we have analytical minds uh, as, uh, in faculty and uh, you will be exposed to uh, students who will study engineering. Uh, there is a lot of IT, there is a lot of technology, there is, uh, uh, there is a lot of creativity and there is a lot of design thinking around you. Uh, and uh, this creates a different spice of uh, management, which is, uh, which is really fascinating in the world that we have now with uh, so much IT, with so much e-commerce. Uh, as uh, just like with uh, BNT and Gestion, you will study in international setting. Uh, the, you will have foreign students around you, and uh, you will you hopefully will study at least one semester abroad. So these are the main uh, these are the main differences. Thank you very much. I'm sure many of you are curious about the prospects of for further studies for graduates of the three fields that we've just talked about. So let's find out what's in offer at the postgraduate program of business studies. We give the floor back to representatives of the two master's degree programs in management, Master of Business Studies and Master of Operations Management. A uh, question to you, Dr. Pomekalski, why applying to business studies at the master's level? Uh, okay, uh, ideally you already have some experience in business, uh, you have worked, uh, but your first degree is, uh, is, usually, not, uh, is usually not business. Uh, you may come from engineering fields, uh, you may also come from humanities. Uh, we accept and are proud to have students of both. We create a variety uh, in, uh, in our students' groups, we want this variety and uh, uh, this will uh, this will create uh, this will create uh, very good uh, very good student groups. Uh, we seek students with academic ability and uh, with intellectual curiosity. Uh, we will take you to the frontiers of business, new ideas, project management, strategic management, um, e-commerce, e-business, uh, business research. Uh, to go there, you need tools uh, that will help you manage teams, departments and entire companies in the future. Uh, you need to understand the complexity of business. Um, again, our students come from different countries. You will have the opportunity to study with people with, from different cultures and uh, backgrounds. Uh, in the final semester, uh, you may become involved in, uh, in our research. So uh, we'll take you to the very edge of the frontier. Uh, we will, um, uh, yes, we will put you on a start of, of a path uh, of continuous education. This is not the end. The, you will continue your studies uh, uh, and uh, as you follow as a leader, uh, you will uh, create learning strategies, uh, engage in reasoning, complex problem solving uh, and employ creativity. Uh, during the studies, we will test your resilience and stress tolerance. Uh, we will not teach you, but we will help you create yourself. Thank you. What about Master of Operations Manager, uh, Professor Petrovska? Yes, program uh, Master of Operations Management. This is also one of the programs we are very proud of because it was developed in a close cooperation with companies. So uh, what we are looking uh, for uh, as far as the cooperation with companies is concerned, it is, you know, very engagement in the educational process. So this program gives you a unique opportunity to work with professionals from representatives from different companies like for Forcia company, Amcor company, Accenture company, Fujitsu, BSH company and of course Amazon company. Yeah, they, what they do, they provide some real cases for our students 
and students they uh, within different modules and courses they solve real problems so uh, this is very practically uh, oriented program uh, which uh, let you develop some competences that are right now needed by by the companies uh, and also by different professionals uh, professional environments what we do here we based on um, very innovative teaching methods like problem-based learning uh, case teaching research-based learning uh, so we focused mainly on the practical aspect, on very active learning methods instead of passive learning. This is our strong ambition to develop um, very active and very innovative teaching here and uh, just to let you not only to be taught, but to let you study at our university. Uh, as I said, the program of Master uh, of Operations Management, uh, this is a program that develops uh, different competences uh, of solving um, complex problems on the production line from technological perspective, from uh, quality improvement perspective, uh, from different other perspectives that are important for production systems. Uh, what we do here, uh, we do our best to deliver uh, very um, updated cases, okay? Just to let you feel how does it look currently uh, at, uh, in the reality, okay, what kind of problems you will face um, in, in, in the near future. So that is why this participation of different uh, representatives from companies is that much important for us. We, we are very proud of it and uh, I think this program is very fruitful, not only for students, but also for, for companies and uh, for, for the university. So this is the, the example of a real cooperation between students, between business, and be, between a university. Thank you to our supervisors. And of course, we invite you to apply for the business programs at our university. You have the knowledge about our bachelor's and master's degree programs, and that's not all. Lodz University of Technology also offers doctoral studies, which are run fully in English and are free of charge. Moreover, each student receives a government scholarship that exceeds the minimum salary in Poland. This is a unique offer on a national scale. And Dr. Monika Nastarowicz from the Interdisciplinary Doctoral School will tell us a little bit more about it. Yes, this is indeed true. The training is conducted in English. What is more, both the research program and the courses uh, have been held, uh, have been tailored to the individual uh, needs of our doctoral candidates. Uh, in our school, we focus on interdisciplinarity, flexibility, and internationalization of doctoral program. We have uh, implemented four years uh, long program, which is based on individual research plan. Our doctoral candidates uh, receive optimal conditions for scientific and personal development. By choos choosing IDS as a doctoral candidate, uh, you will benefit from a high quality uh, and comprehensive training. Each doctoral candidate may also select from uh, a wide range of elective, soft and transferable courses from various disciplines. Thanks to the international nature of our doctoral school and strong collaboration with industry, you will uh, participate in interdisciplinary projects and cooperate with scientists from Poland and abroad. Thank you very much. I'm already thinking of submitting my application to the IDS and you go ahead and plan your future with TOOL as well. Students and their opinions are always important at our university and the real kingdom of students is the student campus. 
Karim, what do you like most about the residential part of our university? I guess it's the, the fact that I can pop in on my friends uh, in the dormitories uh, for a coffee break uh, between classes. Uh, the dorms are just a few minutes walk away from the university, which is uh, really great. And from there, I can get to different parts of the city quickly. But how can you become part of the academic community and live in a dormitory? In what integration events can you take part and what forms of support does TUL offer? We will now talk to our guests about matters important to each student. With us are Ms. Anna Uspolevich from the Student Services Center Office, Dorm Manager Ms. Martina Dombrovic, and Ms. Ada Warkoczewska, Computer Science Student and the President of the International Student Organization ESN IWUC. Uh, Ms. Martina Dombrovic, what conditions must be met to get a place in the dormitory? And will everyone get a place? Candidates inform us about their wish for accommodation when they register on the admissions website. The admission form includes the space where the candidates write whether they want to live in the dormitory or not. That's all, at least when it comes to booking a place. We solve all the formal issues together with the student, usually just before the beginning of the academic year. The cost of accommodation is about 400 zlotys per month, so it's a very good offer which doesn't strain the student budget. What's more, it helps to integrate better, develop interpersonal skills, and master the ability to have small talk, which later pays off in professional life. I remember all the conversations in the corridors, which sometimes ended in the morning and began with the usual conversation about the weather. There are also many common spaces in the dormitories. What other amenities do dorm residents have at their disposal? Well, today fast internet is already a standard, but we stress that our network is adapted in such a way that it doesn't have any limitation. Which a new city of technology was on the, on the first university in, in Poland to get the prestigious title of university in the Microsoft Cloud, which means that 100% of our employees and students use the latest technologies, which are solution in the Microsoft Cloud. Of course, there are laundry facilities for residents, but we also have gyms, fitness rooms, billiard rooms, ping pong rooms, music, multimedia and TV rooms. We also support the educational aspect of student life and offer study rooms and drawing rooms. Uh, studying is time of gaining independence, also financial. Uh, Lodz University of Technology offers many forms of material support and rewards in the form of scholarships. Uh, what kind of scholarships can students apply for? Uh, Ms. Anna Uspolevich. Well, students can apply for various uh, kinds of material support. One of them is a scholarship for students with low incomes, which we call social scholarship, and which can be increased if a student lives in a hall of residence or rents a flat in Łódź. However, this kind of scholarship is not available to all foreign students. There are some restrictions, but the other forms of material support are much more accessible to um, students from abroad. And those are, first of all, a scholarship for students with disabilities. Secondly, financial aid for students who find themselves in a sudden and difficult situation, for example, after an accident. And last but definitely not least, a rector's scholarship, which is the prize for um, excellent academic performance and or achievements in science, art or sport. At our university, you can get a scholarship for academic results already in the first year of studies. Who can benefit from it? Uh, yes, first year and first cycle students uh, can apply for rector scholarship in the year of high school graduation. And if they are winners of international science Olympiads or current international medalists in sports. And as for the second cycle students, they can also apply for rector scholarship in the first year of studies. And the scholarship can be awarded to those students who had excellent results during the first cycle of studies. Thank you. Uh, studies are a big change in life of every young person. It's not only time to learn, but also the best time to make friends, 
uh, broaden your horizons and pursue your passions. Uh, I believe that uh, Ms. Ada Varkoczewska would agree with me on that. Uh, yes, actually, I have to admit that uh, in Lodz University of Technology, there are plenty of possibilities. So, for example, I am a member of ESNI, which, uh, which is a part of Erasmus Student Network, an international organization. So, thanks to my activity in this organization, I was able to meet people from all around the world and uh, develop uh, many skills. Uh, which are not really related with my domain of studies. And uh, what is more, in our university, there are uh, almost 60 uh, research clubs, so students can devote their free time to the scientific passions. And their effects, actually the effects of their work, can be noticed on the international arena. For example, uh, raptors are the authors of uh, Mars rover, uh, Goose are the authors of Home Wind Turbine, and Ubicom are the originators of many solutions for elderly and uh, disabled, such as uh, navigation collar for the blind. Thank you very much. As you can see, studying at Lodz University of Technology can boost your opportunities on many levels. Okay. If you want to find out more about studying at our university, we invite you to the webinar rooms where you will meet representatives of the fields of study. In just a few minutes, at 1 p.m., a special admissions panel will start, where you will meet representatives of Tool International Cooperation Center, and you will learn everything about admissions to Tool step by step, including how to participate in the contest for best candidates whom Tool offers studies free of tuition fee payment. Remember that all links to the webinar rooms together with the schedule you'll find under this stream. Look it up, find the field you are dreaming about, join the chat rooms, and ask your questions. Thank you for your time today and we hope to see you soon on our campus. See you. A university of innovation. It's amazing that science and inventions feature in our lives from the day we are born. The desire to find solutions that ensure our safety and improve our quality of life is what drives research that positively changes the reality we live in. Water is an element we all hold dear. Water is life, and that is why it is so vital if a healthy human body is to function properly. Lots University of Technology scientists come up with interactive inventions that will make our daily care easier than ever before. Truth be told, we are only limited by the limits of our imagination. In a favorable environment, the impossible becomes possible. Interdisciplinary is conducive to development of technologies that assist the progress of humanity. It's what makes new discoveries possible. Pushing back the frontiers and setting ambitious goals yields tangible results. Renewable energy sources are the future of transportation and students of Lodz University of Technology have been working on making it happen. Eco-technology is thousands of kilometers run on solar power. Lots scientists are truly concerned for the natural environment. Air pollution is an unwelcome side effect of industrial development. An analysis of the problem and international cooperation allowed scientists to create novel solutions to remove CO2 from the atmosphere for the benefit of the planet. Multidisciplinary science benefits us all. A carbon nanotube invisible to the naked eye, thousands of times smaller than a human hair, can successfully fight cancer. Scientific effort and long-term research improve the effectiveness of currently available treatment methods. Hybrid organs are not science fiction. At the laboratories of Lodz University of Technology, they are as real as the stars. Cell-based polymer organs open a new chapter in the quality of life of people requiring treatment and awaiting organ transplants. This is the cutting edge of science. Science turns today's ideas into tomorrow's reality. Flexible, wirelessly powered, energy efficient, and having a low manufacturing cost, electronic devices will become ubiquitous. This is where the tiniest detail and perseverance on the path to discovery are of the utmost importance. Is their paper so unique that it's counterfeit proof? Is it possible to change its structure during the production process so that seemingly chaotically distributed fibers could be information carriers? Indeed it is. 
The innovation has a range of practical applications. People are not the only beneficiaries of science. Their environment benefits as well. The most complicated architectural structures can be constructed based on detailed 3D models. This helps to make the landscape of our daily existence original and functional too. There is something uniquely appealing about the revitalized structures. For a long time, the university has been restoring post-industrial buildings and converting them into teaching facilities. Students have also initiated a number of interesting urban renewal projects. Provided with a well-equipped creative space that includes a 3D cave and a multimedia lab, having learned the ins and outs of character animation, a young person metamorphoses into a bold, self-assured creator for whom developing a computer game is just the beginning. Lotz University of Technology